Welcome, I'm Allison, and this video will give you an introduction to the basics of Pixel Table. Pixel Table is a complete backend for multimodal AI development. It's for Python users, and it's also open source, so you can find us on GitHub. Inside our GitHub repository, if you navigate to the Docs folder, you'll find a number of notebooks that contain useful feature guides that I'd really recommend you checking out after you walk through this video with me. In this video, I'll be going through the Pixel Table Basics notebook. You're welcome to open it alongside me in GitHub and follow along, or you can open it up in Google Colab so that you can click through the cells with me. So let's get started. So in this notebook, we're going to learn how to create a new pixel table, how to populate that table with data, including images, and how to enhance the table with both built-in and user-defined transformations, including AI operations. So it takes a minute to do the installations. I went ahead and clicked on the cell, but you should do the same if you're following along with me. So any pixel table project starts by creating a pixel table. So in this code chunk, that's exactly what we're doing. These lines here are mainly useful if you've started this tutorial before and you want a clean slate. The last line is what you should pay the most attention to. So this is how we create a new table with pixel table. We use the create underscore table function. We give it a name here, and we also define our columns. This table is going to be really simple. It's got a single column called input underscore image, and we have to tell pixel table what type of uh, data to expect for this column. This one's going to be a pixel table image object. So if I run this code chunk, you can see that it created a demo because we named our table demo.first and a table called first. We can use t.describe to be able to examine this table schema that we just made. You can see it has demo.first as the name, and it has a single column called input underscore image with type image. This column is not computed. We'll see how that's useful in a moment. We're just going to be inserting images into this column. If you're in a notebook setting, you don't even need the describe function. So you can just type T and you'll see the same information. Now we know that our table is empty. It has no rows. It has no images, but we can still do a t.count to confirm and we see there's zero rows. So in this notebook, we're going to start by adding a single image to our pixel table. We're going to do that using the t.insert function. Our input image is going to be this URL. If I run this code chunk, you can see that it's inserted one row and we can use t.show to see it right away. So this is our first pixel table. It has one row and one column and one image and two giraffes, one and then two over here. So this might seem very simple, but that's the point. It's actually a powerful foundation for starting your AI development workflows. And as you're working with multimodal data like videos, fi video files, audio files, images, and documents, you often need to do a lot of pre-processing steps. And a lot of times you'll need to use AI models along the way. You'll want to experiment, try new things out, test parameters. And you can do that with a powerful function in pixel table called adding computed columns. So here we're going to add an object detection model to our workflow. We're going to use one from Hugging Face. And this actually has a built-in adapter for this model family in pixel table. So we don't have to do any additional downloads or set up an API key. I'm going to just run this code chunk and it takes a second. So we're taking T and we're adding a computed column. The column name is detections. And you can see that we're using this hugging face model. The only input is input underscore image and you can see the model ID. And now when I run this code chunk, it could take a second for you because in the background, Pixel Table is downloading the model from Hugging Face, instantiating it, and caching it for later use. So, what does that mean? When we do t.show again, what you can see is that we have a new column called Detections. And inside that column is the model output for our single image. We can see that the model returned a JSON structure, which contains a number of fields. We've got boxes, labels, scores, and label underscore text. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to focus on label underscore text. And luckily, a lot of models do return outputs in JSON structure. So Pixel Table contains convenience functions to help you extract out the value that you want. So we're going to add another computed column here. We're going to call it detections underscore text. And we're going to base it off of the detections column that we just computed. And then we're going to pull out this label underscore text. And if I do that, you can see 
I do indeed have another computed column here, and it's just those labels that I wanted. Now we've changed our table. So if we want to reinspect the table schema, you'll see now that you have two computed columns, detections and detections underscore text. So this is a powerful feature of pixel table, which is that it's tracking how I actually got to the values that you can see in my table. You can see that here's the model that I used for object detection. And then you can also see that detections underscore text depends on the output of detections. So pixel table under the hood, when I'm using computed columns, it actually does orchestration for me. And we'll show that now as we add new rows. We're going to add four new images to our table. And we're going to use t.insert to do that. I'm going to run this because it takes a moment. Now, what it's not doing is just adding images into our table and then leaving all of those computed columns blank. What it's also not doing is recomputing what we just computed for our giraffe image. It's leaving those object detections behind. What it is doing is inserting an image into each row of our pixel table. And it's noticing that I don't have computed values for those images. So it's actually running the hug hugging face object detection model filling in the values for the detections column and extracting the label text in detections underscore text. It's not erroring out because it doesn't have detections yet. It knows to wait on the output of detections before it extracts the label text. So you can see it ran. We have four rows inserted, values computed, and let's check it out. We're only going to select two of the columns here, but you can see that I do in fact have four new images in my table. We still have our giraffe. We now have a vase, a zebra, a dog in a shoe rack, and a jungle photo with some people and elephants in it. So this is a powerful example of how Pixel Table can help you to be able to iterate as you develop using AI. When you're working with multimodal data, a lot of times it's very expensive to run a model. You don't want to recompute every time. So Pixel Table is always incremental. As you add new rows, it'll do the compute for you. It'll do it in an orchestrated, smart way and you'll be able to rely on the data when you come back to it. And that's one of the principles of pixel table that is very different from a lot of the in-memory Python libraries like pandas that you might be used to. So pixel table is persistent because it's a database. All of your data, all of your transformations and your computed columns are stored and preserved between sessions. This is exactly what you want in a database. You want to be able to rely on it. And it follows Pixel Table's principle of being your store of record so that you own your multimodal data and all of the processing, all of the experimentation and iteration that you need to do to make that an official store of record for you and your workflows. So in this next code chunk, I'm going to demonstrate that for you by clearing out every single thing in this notebook and showing you that it's all still there. I'm going to clear it all, and then I'm going to do a get underscore table and then we're going to call demo first. And you can see that I still have all the images that I inserted, the original that we started with, and the output of that object detections model. Now I'm only showing the first two rows, but I can also show all of them. And you'll see that all of our data is still there and ready for you to share and ready for you to keep working on. Now in the rest of this notebook, we go through how to add a generative model how to use a user-defined function, and how to do basic image manipulations, like this one is rotating the images upside down. I hope this has given you a sense of what's possible in Pixel Table. If you go back to our docs, you can find a number of notebooks to explore, and also join our Discord for support as you explore.